have you noticed a difference in period pain starting from your raw vegan diet? Hell yes. Hell yes. I am not with Metro anymore. <laughs> when I say Metro, we don't know her. We don't know who period pains are. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are good. So in today's video, I'm going to be answering a few questions that you guys have either asked me in the DMs or have put in my question box on Instagram. Thank you to those who asked some questions on Instagram. I'm just going to jump straight into it. This is a health-based Q&A. So if you're interested in that, then definitely keep watching. So the first question asks, what prompted your vegan journey? So... I just want to put a disclaimer out there. I'm let me not come and lie on the internet. <laughs> I'm not 100% vegan, but I am trying to make better life choices. I am trying to eat better, watch what I put on my body, watch what I put in my body, my body on my body. Basically, take better care of myself. So the plant-based uh, diet for me, it's a lifestyle, is one that I found that's helped me. It might not work for everyone, but I find that when I eat when I eat unprocessed raw plant foods. I am less likely to get sick. I haven't been sick in a very, very long time, which is kind of annoying because sometimes I would, <laughs> sometimes I want to cancel stuff and pretend that I'm sick, but my conscience just can't let me do it because clearly I haven't been sick in a long time. Anywho, back to the question. So what prompted this whole journey of like health or just making better choices for myself? So I would say it started after I got surgery. If you're new here or if you missed the videos about my surgery, because I took them down. <laughs> because they were just a bit too much. But if you missed the video, I uh, I think it was March of 2021, so nearly two years now, I had, yeah, it's coming up to two years on the 17th, I had surgery to remove ovarian cysts on my, was it left ovary? Yeah, on both ovaries actually, ovarian cysts on both ovaries, and basically one ovary had to go because it was so damaged by the cyst like it was so the cyst was so big that they had to take out the whole the whole ovary had to get and unfortunately i also lost a fallopian tube in that surgery as well so after that it just made me question a lot i remember after the surgery and i was like having a, no it was actually before the surgery i was having like a little checkup with my doctor before i went in and he went through like all the stuff, like all the stuff that has to do with my surgery, what I need to do to prepare, the stuff that I should pack, blah, blah, blah. But I remember literally right at the end of my appointment, he was like, yeah. So he was like clicking stuff and he was like, also remember after your surgery to eat at least five portions of fruit and vegetable a day, fruits and vegetables a day. And that really just stuck with me for some reason because he said it so quickly and so like, by the way, it was almost like, just, I don't know, he just didn't seem that like serious about what he said, although he did say it. That stuck with me for some reason. And I said to myself, ooh, I'm gonna have to do more research into this because I didn't understand how me being so young, kind of fit at the time, although I was kind of overweight at the time, but kind of fit at the time why I had so many health issues. Like <laughs> that year, when I tell you I was sick, like I was sick and yeah, so him saying that, I just wanted to kind of look into it more. And then one day, this was in May, two months after my surgery, and I don't even remember straight after my surgery, did I not go and make a goosey pound of jam? I went straight back to my bad habits. But thankfully, God saved me because one day I was on the train, I was going to see my hairstylist, uh, Jennifer Cynthia. This, this whole explanation is so long, but it's my story. So <laughs> let me just tell it. So I was going to see my hair stylist to get a silk press and I was on the train and this video popped up on my YouTube as a like re recommended video for some reason. I've never watched anything relating to health. I've never watched anything relating to plant-based food. It just happened to pop up on my recommended page on YouTube. So I clicked on it because I had time to watch it. And it was basically a video of Dr. Aris, 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 oh my God, I always butcher this man's name. Aris Letham, I think that's how you say his name. And he was explained, it was like a what I eat in a day video by Dr. Aris Letham. And he's basically a plant-based vegan. He's been vegan for years, I think like up to 40 years or something. And I was so inspired by that video. Like, it was only like a maybe like 10, 20 minute video, I can't remember. But when I tell you I was so inspired by that video, I was like, it was like a light bulb. I was like, oh my goodness, I've been killing myself. <laughs> this is why I'm sick. This is literally why I'm sick. Yeah, whilst on the train, it was like an epiphany. I was like, yep, tomorrow, that's it. I'm gonna stop. And with me, when I when I um, have something in my heart, like I have to do it. 
this hair on my nose when I have something on my heart like I have to do it straight away so I wasn't trying to be like oh yeah I'll start on Monday or I'll do it after or you know we'll see how it goes I'll start small I literally went all the way in <laughs> So the next, I think it was like the next day or maybe like a few days after, I went food shopping and I only bought fruits and vegetables, nuts, seeds and grains. And since that day, I kid you not, it was May 2021, I have never gone food shopping and bought processed foods. I only buy fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, grains, and that's it, literally. So that was basically the turning point for me when I realized that I had this health issue and I had so many pills in my cupboard, like it was ridiculous. I always had headaches, I had allergies, I woke up with rashes, my face was swollen, my ankles, oh my goodness, my ankles were so swollen. I had this throbbing pain on my left ankle. It was basically all information and from there I was like, yeah, I need to just make better life choices. And I did more research into it and the more I ate this way, the better I felt. And it just was basically just up from there. It was it was just the best decision I've, I've personally ever made for myself. It works for me. It might not work for everyone, but I, I feel like it would be selfish of me to keep this information to myself. And plus, I literally can't. Like, I just want to sing, sing it to everyone the same way. <laughs> same way when you get saved and you want to tell everyone, hey, I'm saved, is the same way I feel about plant-based food. Okay, let me just pause there because I can't keep talking and not mention my hair. Clearly, you guys see it. Ooh. I love this hair. This hair is gorgeous, gorgeous, and it's by none other than Rooka Hair. Rooka Hair, they have outdone themselves with this unit. I'm gonna tell you all about it and how I got this in store right now. This wig is part of a new collection from Rooka Hair. It's a brand new collection that features classic, iconic, glam styles i'm sure you guys will love it think 90s glam think early 2000s glam think it girl think naomi campbell if those things are ringing a bell to you then this collection is definitely for you what i love about this wig literally from the onset was the fact that it is high quality the hair feels so soft to the touch and the bundles are full the quality of the frontal is impeccable the lace is gorgeous literally it matched so well with my skin i couldn't fault it at all but to make it match that much better i took my black opal foundation stick and i rubbed it on the lace this always gives a gorgeous gorgeous melt and it just makes your lace look so skin like literally flawless another thing i love about this wig is that it comes styled guys i literally had nothing to do <laughs> after sticking this wig on my head i had nothing else to do the curls were already intact the baby hairs were cut for me the hair was laid for me all i had to do was stick it on my head and it looked incredible let me know what you guys think about this wig down below i absolutely love it it is so soft i can't describe anymore just how soft it is i'm going to show you the back just so you can get an idea of the movement the hair moves so well and it has a gorgeous gorgeous luster so if you are interested in this wig definitely click the link down below in the description box and get your hands on it or any other units from their collection thank you so much to Rooka hair for sponsoring this video how do you stay consistent when eating healthy? Okay, for me, what works for me is that because I live alone and there's no what there's no distractions or there's no um, temptation, it's easy for me. It's easier for me than maybe somebody that lives with family or has a, a family to feed or is a mother or you live at home with maybe your siblings or you live with different people that might not eat the same way you do. Thankfully for me, I don't. So the only time that I would feel tempted because it's just very hard. When I tell you it's very hard to go out to eat, as in like go to a restaurant and get healthy food, especially unprocessed raw fruit, is very, very hard. It's damn near impossible. <laughs> so the only time that I would feel tempted is when I socialize. Because surprisingly enough, when we socialize, you'd be so surprised at how much food comes into socializing. Not just food, alcohol comes into socializing. You're basically looked as a weird one if you don't drink, if you don't smoke, or if you don't eat junk, which is ridiculous. But it's ridiculous, but that's just the way life is at the moment. So for me, I find it easier because I live by myself. I don't buy anything outside of the realm of uh, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, and grain. And I 
personally find there's some vegetables or fruits that I don't necessarily like but when I mix it into a juice it makes it easier for me to consume and, and put it into my body so the vegetables and fruits that I don't necessarily like I make them into juices and the stuff that I really like I just eat them so for, for example watermelon I eat a lot raspberries I eat a lot pears I eat a lot lettuce I eat a lot parsley I really like so I eat that a lot avocados I eat but a lot of the other stuff I juice because I know that I won't necessarily like it like through my mouth but I like it when it's mixed if that makes sense so juicing has helped me get things into my body that I need without necessarily having to um, compromise on taste and yeah the fact that I don't necessarily have temptations like no one is here to say oh by the way eat this or I don't have the smell of like cooked food near me or yeah or I just yeah I just I live by myself so it's so much easier the only temptation I, I can say I have is you know once in a while I might want a little to live a root you know because sometimes it bees like that but every single time I do it like no joke every single time I feel like I, I feel like I want cooked or um, processed food the minute I eat the food I feel sick I'm not even like it's really like it's so ridiculous I don't know why I keep doing it to myself because every single time I eat foods that I know that I shouldn't be eating even whilst I'm eating it, I actually feel like I'm going to throw up. So I feel like the more I've been on this journey, the less I crave those foods. And even when I do crave those foods, I'm sent straight back to where I was coming from because it, it just doesn't hit anymore. And because I know exactly what's gone into making the food, and I know exactly like the process and I know how harmful each ingredient can be onto my body it's easier for me to say no sometimes I don't always say no but it's easier for me to say no because if I look at chicken all I think about is like feathers and and poo and and skin and I don't know pus and it just makes me kind of look ugh. so yeah but sometimes it'd be very good so it depends I stay consistent by not having as many temptations as the average person I guess and Basically, the more I do it, the less I want to fall for other things. So, and plus it's tasty. I feel like once you get into this, you would actually realize it, it actually tastes good. <laughs> and you actually feel good. You're more energized, you're lighter, you're, you, your head is clearer, you wake up better, you're not tired, you're not sluggish. You have so much like life, you want to go outside. So it's easy just to not be swayed into eating stuff or do, putting things in your body or on your body that you don't necessarily want to do. So, yeah. <laughs> Next question says, how long did it take for you to fully recover from your keyhole surgery? Did you have hormonal treatment after? So, unfortunately for me, because of how serious the cyst was on my left ovary, because it was so big, unfortunately for me, I couldn't, I didn't have the option of a keyhole surgery. They had to basically cut me right open, cesarean style. So, the question says, how long did I recover? Boy, that surgery, that surgery, woo. I don't, I, this is not even any shape, but I don't know how the BBL girls do it. When I tell you, my body was in pain, like severe pain. I've never felt anything like that before. It was painful. The recovery was very, very hard. I couldn't even sneeze. I couldn't laugh. That's how tough it was. Um, it hurts a lot. And it took me, they said it was gonna take me four weeks to recover. I think it took me about that, about four to five weeks to recover. But once I was recovered, slowly I was getting back to things, but it, I can't, it definitely had a toll on my body. Did you have hormonal treatment after? No, I, they never told me anything about hormonal treatment. So no, I didn't have any hormonal treatment after. Okay, so the next question says, what kind of healthy snacks do you snack on when you feel peckish? So, when I feel peckish, I this is like my all-time favorite. It's not for everyone. Again, this is what I found work for my, works for myself. But hummus, hummus and cucumber. Wait, what's the new thing that the kids are doing? Hummus and cucumber. That's me. Like, every different flavor of hummus is a bit of me. The Waitrose hummus smacks the smoked hummus from Waitrose. Try it. The sweet chili hummus from Morrison's. The jalapeno hummus from Morrison's. <laughs> and the cucumber, oh my God. Five and six, five and six. So that's one of my snacks. Or I would have, ooh, this is 
is a new one that I found. Oh my god. So one day I was like, I'm really craving like sweets, but I obviously don't want to eat sweets. And funny enough, I'm not really a sweets person. I don't like candy like that, but I just wanted something sweet. So I sliced open the date and uh, took out the pit and I put peanut butter inside it. Oh my god, when I tell you, I can't even describe the taste. It tastes like chocolate peanut but it just tastes so good and the texture oh my god i've been snacking a lot on that i try not to have too many though because I, I think there's like a limit with the amount of dates you can have daily but when i tell you that slaps it slaps differently what else do i snack on i would just eat a fruit or eat a vegetable so sometimes i'll just snack on like strawberries or i'll snack on cucumber or i'll snack on orange oh i don't know for some reason orange juice fills me up a lot like when i eat oranges or when i have a juice it fills me up a lot so oranges yeah just eat eat the fruit i don't always juice 24 7 just eat the fruit you'd be surprised how full you get by eating fruit or salad is quite filling sometimes depending on the salad so yeah i hope that helps so the next question said says have you noticed a difference in period pain starting from your raw vegan diet hell yes hell yes i spoke about this on the other video that is now deleted but girl the perks of this like plant-based diet i am not with metro anymore <laughs> when i say metro we don't know her we don't know who period pains are anymore anymore okay like we don't have that over here and the fact that i've suffered from period pains my whole literally since like the day i started my period i have been in pains until maybe i think it started to like slowly die down i would say when i started to notice maybe like september 2021 i would say that's when i started to notice that bro Where's she at? Like the period is not even making noise anymore. <laughs> so I had my surgery in March and I started like my plant-based diet in May, well like my plant-based lifestyle in May. And I think by like September, I started to notice like, where's she at? Where's the pains at? Because honestly, my periods, if it wasn't for the fact that I can see the blood, I wouldn't know about my period. That's how painless it is. Like there's nothing there. <laughs> there's literally nothing there. And like I also mentioned in the other video, I've noticed that apart from not having period pains, when I say I don't have any pain, I mean like the first day I feel a bit of discomfort. Like obviously you have like the swollen, uh, swollen breasts, but they're not as swollen as they used to be. Um, or the hard nipples, they're not as hard as they used to be. Or I would feel like cramping before my period comes. I don't get cramping, I just know it's coming because I can feel something, but it's not a cramp. I don't know, I can just feel like something happening down there but that is definitely not cramps so aside from not having cramps anymore not feeling bloated all that kind of stuff that mm, we don't deal with her anymore thank god because that's not a nice feeling i also noticed that the blood in my period is red it's no longer like sometimes when i when i used to have my period i'll get loads of blood clots like big blood clots i know this is very tmi but we're all girls here well i would hope so <laughs> I would get blood clots, I would get like basically uneven bleeding. Sometimes it's really heavy, sometimes it's light, sometimes it's light pink, sometimes it's really deep, dark purple red. It's like weird, but now it's just straight red blood. Like there's no clotting, there's no like issues with the blood. It's just straight, it's just straight red blood. So yeah, I'm really happy. I like the fact that my periods don't hurt. I like the fact that I don't have like menstrual issues anymore because honestly that was a pain in the butt like and it's annoying like i said before i can't even make excuses like oh my period sorry i can't come i have period pains because my conscience won't let me do it because i know full well i'm fine <laughs> so yeah that's definitely a perk what got you plant-based eating so like i said it was more just being sick all the time having health issues my back hurting my ovaries which i didn't know about until i went to the doctors cysts skin issues swelling my body was just not liking me <laughs> clearly what i was putting on my body wasn't agreeing with me so it was my body's way of telling me something is really wrong so i just had to you know dig deeper and find the source of i mean the root of the problem and thank god i found it and now i'm able to manage it a lot better next question what's your body care routine um i think i did a body care routine on my what what i eat in a day i swear i did i might be mistaken but if i did i'll leave it down below but 
I'm just any regular degular schmegler. I take a shower. <laughs> I am gonna change my soap soon, my shower gel, because I do use a fragranced shower gel from a well-known brand, and I don't think that's the best thing to use. So I'm like trying to switch things up with like what I use in regards to like topical on my body. So I'm gonna change my shower gel back to uh, Dr. Broner's Castile soap, the tea tree one. That was really good. I I used to use it during um, lockdown and yeah it was really good so i'm definitely going to go back to that but it's just so expensive like so that and like i mentioned in my last video i use lime as deodorant under the arms i cream my body with shea butter which i make myself i think i have a video on how i make my shea butter i'll link it down below or in the card so you guys can have a look at that i also want to go back to using african black soap on my face because again i do use branded stuff on my face which have ingredients that i can't pronounce so i'm probably gonna switch to a more natural soap for my face and then what else? Dental care, I use a natural toothpaste. I think I put that in the video as well. I have a tongue scraper and I floss. Yeah, I think that's it. If I remember anything else, I'll leave it down below. But yeah, I'm switching things up. I feel like once I've switched things up properly and I'm, once I've got into a routine of things, I'll probably do another separate video just on my body care routine if you guys wanna see it. Do you think switching your diet may lead to negative negative relationship with food hmm. interesting question um personally for me no i feel like i have a better relationship with food in the sense that i'm not emotionally eating anymore because before this i definitely used to emotionally eat i would eat non-stop like i didn't even realize i was doing it and i think i was doing it at the time to suppress what like sounds so like dramatic but what i was going through in life <laughs> But I definitely was emotional eating, like I was eating too much. I was eating too much and I was eating too much of the bad, of the wrong things. And now I'm able to have more self-control. I'm able to have a lot more discipline with myself. And I feel like having self-control and discipline definitely doesn't correlate with having a negative re relationship with food for me. I think negative relationship with, with food is when you start to do things like starve yourself to lose weight or do things like throw your food up, trigger one if anyone ha who has any eating disorders or do things like binge eat and then throw your food up or things like that. I, I'm just very conscious about what I put in my body and I'm very conscious of how I treat my body. So I like to exercise, I like to go out, I like to put the right things in my body here and there once in a blue moon, I might have the odd, I don't know, calamari or something, but it's nothing that's consistent and it's nothing that's gonna get me back to square one. So I, would, I wouldn't say I have a bad relationship with food. In fact, I have a better relationship with food and I'm able to manage exactly what I put, put in my body with a lot more control and a lot more discipline. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. Are you concerned about too much weight loss? So since doing this, when I started, I believe I weighed, I think it was, I between 78 to 80 kg something like that i think when i had my surgery i was like maybe 78 kg which for me is too big for my height i'm five feet i'm five feet seven and according to the bmi scale let me check because let me not get it wrong according to the bmi scale i shouldn't be anything more than 72 kg Anything more than 72 kg, I'm overweight. So I definitely was overweight because I was 78 kg. So now I am down to, I think the last time I weighed myself was like, I was 66 kg. So I've lost about, about 10 plus stone, I mean kg, right? And for me at first, it was definitely about weight loss. Mm. It was half about weight loss, half about like lifestyle and wanting to do better and wanting to have a better have better health but i definitely was in it for weight loss as well as that but now that i'm comfortably in it and it's consistent and i don't see myself like going back to where i was before eating processed food having no limits um eating what i wanted when i wanted having no limits with t the times i eat and stuff like that it's not about weight for me anymore it's just about not catching a disease and not getting sick for me for me i i'm doing it to one set an example for my lineage when i have children i don't want them to have bad habits or pick up bad habits that i may have had before i had them so if i was eating a certain way before i had children and i have children the way i'm eating is going to affect my children because they're relying on me for food and if i'm giving them bad food they're gonna get sick and their kids are gonna get sick so yeah i want to do better for my lineage i want to do better for myself 
I don't want to be sick because who wants to be sick? I want to live a healthy, long life. I want to have a happy life, not have, having to worry about healthcare. So no, it's not about weight loss or weight gain for me anymore. It's just about maintaining a healthy, balanced lifestyle for me. I don't want to get to a point where I'm like fragile and skinny and I don't think I'll ever get to that point because I don't think I ever under eat and I'm not over eating. I think I'm literally right at the balance of under eating and over eating. I don't eat too much and I don't eat too little, so yeah. The last question says that you think it has nothing to do with this, so yeah. Thank you so much to Rocker for sponsoring this video. I absolutely love this hair. Oh my gosh, I can't even wait to reinstall. I don't even want to take it off. Like, I literally want to, I don't, I don't even, if you know me, you know I don't sleep in wigs, but I'm going to risk it for a chocolate biscuit tonight. I'm sleeping in this wig because everybody must see me in this unit. Everyone must see me in this unit. If you want to know more about this hair, where I got it from, everything, I'll leave all the information in the description box. Make sure you check it out. So that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you to those who asked the questions. I hope this answered a lot of your questions. If you have any more questions, definitely leave them in the comment section down below. And I'll try my best to answer them for you. But yeah, that's it from me. Thank you again for watching. And I'll see you guys soon in another video. Bye, guys. Mwah.